Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to interpret the results after you've clicked solve. So I've previously created my geometry and I just clicked the solve button just then. So waiting a few seconds for it to create the results, you will notice that we have a series of results here. Now at the top we have our free body diagram. It'll tell you the values for your reactions <coughs> at the left fixed support and at the middle pin support. We also have some hand calculations which allow you to verify the results shown here, but they'll be dedicated to its own video. Next we have the beam section that we used, so the I-beam is represented here with its dimensions. You have a summary of the section properties, and you also have a summary for the material properties. Moving down, you can see the shear force diagram. So you'll notice that the diagram plots the shear force against the length of the beam and the numbers here represent the matching shear force equations. So we also have a calculator here which allows you to determine a specific value at a specific um, position along your beam. So for example at the 2.6 meter location somewhere here you're able to accurately determine a value for shear force. We also have some hand calculations for you, but that will have its own video. Now for bending moment diagram, we also have a chart that plots the bending moment against the length of the beam, and you can click the button here to reverse the direction if you so choose. And in a similar sort of way, you can specify a position and determine the exact value for bending moment and the numbers again match to the bending moment equations. Now moving down, we also have the vertical deflection and the elastic curve. So you will notice that the elastic curve is plotted against the actual structure and you'll have a table here which gives you deflection values and their locations. So this table is ordered from most negative to most positive and it will tell you the values on the beam. So the most negative value is here, which is the most downward deflection, and then it will keep um, in order until the most positive deflection, which is upwards, which is somewhere along here. In the table below, we also have um, a table for rotational displacement, and this will give you values for the most negative rotation to the most positive rotation and the locations along the beam. In a similar way, you can also enter in a value here and it'll tell you the rotation at that specific point. Now, it's important to note that the rotational displacement takes negative as clockwise and positive to be counterclockwise relative to the horizontal positive x-axis. Moving on, you have the 3D renderer, which gives you a graphical way to look at the beam that you created, as well as the section that you assigned. Now, you can also switch between the two different um, views, but we'll go into more depth in, in a separate video. Now, in the final two tables, you have some stress results. Now, you'll notice that you have results for the maximum transverse shear stress and the maximum normal bending stress. Now these are separated into the highest upward and downward transverse shear values and it will give you the location of where these are located. So you will notice that it's located at the neutral axis here and it's located at the specific point of the beam. Now, Looking into the bending stress, you will notice that the, the highest tension and the highest compression values are the same magnitude um, and the values occur at the top and bottom fibers of that section. Now looking at the custom values, you can actually specify a specific point, so for example 2.6, you will notice that we have values for the maximum transverse shear and the maximum normal bending stress at that particular location. So it will tell you that the maximum stress values for bending 
have the same magnitude but they'll also say um, where they occur so as you might expect for bending at the top and the bottom fibers have the highest bending stress and for transverse shear you will notice that you have the value of 2.68 um, which is located at the neutral axis um, for this section. So transverse shear commonly only has one value but if you notice that we have two values here it's because at the 2.5 meter location we had a discontinuous jump and going back to the shear force diagram you will notice at 2.5 there are two values present for this um, shear force. So I hope that's been informative. There have been a lot of results to cover but I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you for the next video. Bye for now.